Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So, first video back after Christmas. First thing I want to say, I hope you all had a great Christmas. Uh, we had a good Christmas, quite quiet. Uh, we just kind of did the, the minimum feeding and uh, yeah, that was just the minimum kind of work that had to be done. We did do a little bit of work as well on the heron side of the trailer. It's on the 3650 there behind us. Uh, the Holy Heron, the famous, the fabled Holy Heron. Uh, but there will be a video coming on it in the coming days so keep an eye out for that and um, we we'll nearly have it finished and i'll show you uh, the finished product when it's all done and dusted but yeah hope you all had a great christmas uh yeah we had a great christmas uh hope santa come hope you're all staying safe because the COVID really is rampant at the minute uh, record numbers here in ireland and i think across the uk uh, and all over europe as well so it's a strange time. We just have to watch it. I've you probably hear my voice. I have a bit of a cold. I've been doing ant antigen tests over the last few weeks, but all is coming back clear, which is great. But uh, yeah, for cold, it's getting hard to shift it. It seems to every time I'm almost shot of it. Uh, rains or something, I get a wetting and I get a relapse of it. So that's been going on for the last month or so. Uh, what I get for Christmas? Well, I treated myself to here. It's actually I'm recording with, so you can't see it. Uh, one of the new GoPro Hero tens, so that should hopefully improve picture quality a little bit. And uh, I also got this here for Christmas. It's a, a microphone as well. Now I haven't used it yet, so. I, I'll have to try it out a few times and just make sure that uh, I don't screw up the audio and end up doing some video work and have poor audio. So I've tried it out a few times, make sure I'm just using it correctly and uh, hopefully it'll improve the audio quality as well. So uh, yeah, a couple of things just to help improve the videos and that's always a good thing. So uh, yeah, we're going to have a few, look at a few things. First, we're just going to talk about our spray off. Uh, it's on the tractor here, on the 6.4 in the background. So we'll have a quick talk about that. Uh, we're also going to have a wee look at a couple of pieces of vintage equipment. We've got uh, a binder and a threshing mill that we are, we've actually sold. So we're going to have a look at those as well. And uh, just a bit of a mixed bag and you'll see what's going on. All right, so as I mentioned, sprayer is on the tractor. Uh, I mentioned in one of the last videos I put up with the sprayer that we were going to sell it. We we're changing it for a bigger sprayer. Uh, we've up our acres, we need something a bit bigger that will speed the job up and I mentioned I was going to sell it. When I done that, a couple of people messaged me asking me when I was going to sell it, would I contact them, let them know and they might buy it off me before I advertise it. So I said I'd do that. We had a couple of weeks, you know, we had a bit of burning off to do. This is back towards the end of the summer or September time. Uh, and finished up with it, messaged one of the guys, he didn't take it. Second guy I messaged, yeah, no problem, I'll take it. So that was it. Uh, the spray was sold, got deposit and all. We said that we'd send it away and get a spray and test done on it, which we did, uh, and it's all tuned up and ready to go. We wanted to have it right for uh, the man that's coming to take it. And it is, uh, yeah, it, that's the way it is. That's, we, we, we don't want to have any issues with it when, when he takes it away. Uh, and it's really come up like new, so it has. Uh, Spread some detergent and washed it all down, and it come up, it come up like the first day. So, uh, yeah, looks very, very well, and uh, be happy that it's going to a good home. But, yeah, so it's going next week, and that's that. We have a sprayer ordered. Uh, it won't be here till I think maybe then the February March time, something like that. So it should be just in time for the spraying season. I hope. All right. So here's something that you don't see every day. It is a binder. So it's an Albion binder. Uh, an Albion number five to be precise and basically before there was a combine you had a binder uh, the binder done the cutting in the field uh, you can see there's a, a finger knife here on the front of it so pretty similar to a binder I suppose in some ways uh, so pretty similar to a combine should I say in some ways uh, you had a divider here which folded down to separate the the corn or whatever barley whatever wheat oats whatever you're cutting uh, we'll just go around the side here this was your seat so the operator sat up here the seat is actually taken off it just for transport because it sticks out a good bit past it but your seat was here uh, and your controls were all here as well so a few different controls that you had you had uh, this one here was for uh, just rising and lowering the reel so depending on the height of your crop uh, this one here then was for you could push your reel out take it back in and uh, you also have some other down here for for moving the the table here at the back also depending on the size of the the, the length of the crop that you're cutting so 
basically it's a couple of the parts of the reel taken off here for transportation but uh, the reel spins around pulls the current pretty much the same as like a combine uh, pulls the crop in crop lays flat on uh, the canvas here it pulls it up it then when it gets to here it goes up between the two canvases here in the center so squeezes in there comes up the back when it comes up the back comes down lands here in a pile when it gets to a certain point it triggers a, a knot out here on the back and it will tie a knot on a uh, on the, the sheaf so See, you have a ball of twine here, so it's the old sisal twine that's on it. And it comes round, it's threaded round in here, and ties the knot in it, pops it out in the ground. And it just leaves it in, basically leaves it in piles down the field for you to come along then and stook it. Usually is what was done. There'd be a group of men would come behind it and put them into stooks, they're called. Maybe put half a dozen of them together and they'd be left outside to wilt for a while. Uh, in a lot of cases it would be cut, the crop would be cut green so it would be left laying for a number of days then to maybe a couple of weeks to colour a little bit before taking it in and getting it ready for thrashing. So yeah, hell of a, hell of a machine at the time. Uh, the knotter on them actually isn't that dissimilar to the knotter on a lot of square balers. Uh, it's very very similar in the way that it works and uh, yeah it's used to even to this day basically the same idea. Uh, fantastic bit of kit. Like before these, you had a, a horse-drawn reaper, they were called, uh, which involved two men on it. Uh, one would sit in the centre, driving the horses and keeping it all straightened up and cutting, uh, or keeping the the reaper straightened up for cutting. Uh, and there was another man then on the laying off side, who his job was then to leave it in piles. Didn't knot it like this here. Uh, it was quite labour intensive. You needed two men to turn the reaper and a lot of men coming behind then stooking it because they actually had to tie all the sheaves together. It was a way of doing it using the crop that you were cutting that you had to tie it all together. Uh, seen it done. I did do it a number of years back. Can't remember how to do it now, but uh, if I was shown I could do it again. But uh, yeah, it was very labour intensive uh, and took a lot of men to to. To, to do the job. When the binders come on the scene, they actually got rid of a lot of that work because you didn't need all the guys come behind gathering it up and tying it. It was already tied and there was only one man needed usually on the, the binder to, to drive it. So uh, there's stories going around. I've heard different old people talking about that, that uh, binders would be sabotaged because uh, it usually meant that some of the farm workers, you know, when the new binder arrived in the field, uh, all those years ago, uh, they sabotaged the binder because they seen the binder as something that was uh, going to take their job away. So uh, there's numerous stories like that. Well, binder was sabotaged, parked inside the field. You know, the new owner said, ah, it doesn't work right. It's no good. And we'd go back to the old way. And they kept their job for another while until uh, they figured out what happened. It. So, uh, yeah, different different stories like that. But uh, they're quite a heavy binder, the, the Albion. Uh, there is a McCormick one which would be a lot lighter to, to pull. We would usually have three horses in this when we'd be uh, when we'd be using it because it just leaves it a bit easier on the horses. Um, so yeah, we haven't used it in a couple of years. We've usually used it at some shows. We have in the past uh, grown maybe an acre of oats here at the bottom of the yard and cut it on occasion as well. But uh, just haven't haven't done that in the last few years. But hopefully this year, if some shows goes ahead, we might get it out and get using it because they're a fantastic piece of machinery to see working and it's nice to see these old ways being kept going, you know, so. But yeah, that's the that's the Albion. Uh, we also have a tra had the trashing mill. We've actually sold it. We, we haven't used it in seven or eight years and it went away today. So I have a little bit of footage. I'll do a bit of a voiceover on it and you'll see it driving away as well. So uh, yeah, we'll put that in now in the next part of the video. So this was our Garvey thrashing machine, a tree walk-on machine, as you can see into the back of it. Um, 
not the biggest machine. I've seen four walkers. I've also seen two walkers. But this would have been a fairly standard sized machine uh, that would have been doing the rounds uh, around the the areas uh, back when you were, when you were at harvest. Uh, very original machine this you can see there's a wooden ladder on it there's original jack on it uh, there was all new belts put on it uh, we did a little bit of work to it here and there just uh, to have it in top walking order and it was working absolutely perfect a great trashing mill um this now is around just on the bagging side of it so this is where you'd hang your bags when uh, your grain was coming out uh, this is the lid here just in a wee separator that there is in there uh, like th these machines worked better than a combine in a lot of cases to trash the grain very clean uh, whereas the combine you know could be walking on slopes or in bits of hills here and there these machines here were uh, leveled off and they were rigid and and you know they, they worked very very well uh, but yeah excellent excellent machine the lads that bought it uh, actually come to to pick it up with uh, a 135 and they were heading off uh, to Kells, so quite a trip. It's been an hour in the cow, uh, or a little more than an hour where they were going to. So they had a nice, a nice trip ahead of them. This was them just after leaving the yard. I sent the drone up, drone up just to get a bit of footage of them. Uh, the man that purchased this was into mills and knew all the details on this mill, which is always very nice. Uh, but I do mention that now in a second in the in the finish up of the video. You know, some of the water here lying. It's just all the rain that we've had. The rivers are all full and overflowing at the minute, uh, but that's a whole other story. Uh, but yeah, nice sight to see the mill on the move again. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll purchase a mill sometime in the future again. You never know. So that was the mill going. Really nice to see it going to a good home. The man that bought it actually worked on the mill uh, 62 years ago, he said. So uh, when he was only a young boy, he was up and fed some... Uh, some corn into the mill and uh, he knows the whole history of it he knows the first guy who bought it isn't was bought new in 1947 and he knows every owner along the way so uh, he knows the history of it and it, it 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 means something to him so it's really nice to see it going to a good home like that uh, so yeah he's they're going to have a trashing so uh, hopefully they're going to let us know whenever it's on and we'll go up and we'll, we'll do, do a bit of a footage maybe up at it or we'll see if they'll allow it I'll take the drone and do a bit of a fly over on it and uh, yeah it'd be nice to see it walking again so that's it uh, that's it for today's video a little bit of a mixed bag uh, hope you enjoyed it New Year's Eve today just want to wish everybody a happy new year have a great night stay safe and we'll see you in the next few days take care